Hey guys, Mr. A here to help you with your GCSE economics revision. What I'm going to cover today is simply taking a look at the explanation of fiscal policy. And the basic definition of fiscal policy is the use of taxation and government spending to influence the economy. For this objective, that's all you need to know. We've covered taxation and spending earlier in the course, but now we're going to look at fiscal policy in more detail and see how it actually does influence the economy. Now that you can explain what is meant by fiscal policy, you have to understand the meaning of a balanced budget, budget deficit, and budget surplus. Um, kind of complicated, but we're going to try to break it down so you understand. I'll have my beautiful assistant helping me in just a second. So the two things you need to be aware of to understand what's happening with the budget are government spending, and there's some examples of government spending you can see, and taxation. And this is the way the government gets money from the people, businesses, and we need to check out the balance of these two, right? If it's heavier in one way or the other, we have a situation which we'll describe. Now, when the two are equal, when government spending and taxation are equal, we have what is called a balanced budget. Sorry, guys, the beautiful assistant didn't show up today. Second part of this is taking a look at when taxes are greater than government spending. When taxes are greater than government spending, you have a situation what's called a budget surplus. So you stuck with me, David, and Mr. A. Now the third situation is when government spending exceeds what the government has collected in tax. That is called a budget deficit. Very fancy artwork, I know. Now, once you understand what's happening with these here and on what side it falls, you can explain whether it's a budget surplus, budget deficit, or if it's balanced. All right, I'd like to take a minute now to explain in more detail how fiscal policy works. So the first approach we're going to take is taking a look at expansionary fiscal policy. Now, I'm going to take this to the side and explain to you what that entails. Expansionary fiscal policy is trying to boost aggregate demand or increase real GDP. And through fiscal policy, what the government can do is either decrease taxation or increase government spending. Now, that's expansionary policy, or what it's also called reflating the economy. The other side to that is contractionary fiscal policy. And this is when the government is potentially trying to slow down economic growth or curb inflation. And the way they would do that is by either increasing tax or reducing government spending in an attempt to curb the growth of the economy. When we're using contractionary or expansionary fiscal policy, what we need to be mindful of is where the economy, economy currently is. So I'm going to show you a graph of the business cycle, which takes a look at the economic growth rate over time. Now, the dotted line represents the trend of the economy over time. The blue line represents the actual movements of the economic growth rate. Now, what you can see, I've labeled on the top right corner here, uh, what is called a boom. A boom is when the economy is performing really well. A lot of people are working. Businesses are doing well. Uh, the economy is generating a lot of value, a lot of output. And what we'll notice there is that government should tend to run a surplus. Now, that's fine. When everything is going well, the government shouldn't need to spend too much money in comparison to the tax it collects because generally the economy is doing very well. People are working and there's money coming in. When the economy starts to slow down and move towards this trough, the government will start to tend, well, sorry, will tend to run a deficit because they're starting to spend more in order to compensate for the lack of economic activity that is coming from the private sector, as well as compensate those people who are no longer working. So there's a greater need for the government to spend when the economy slows down, and a, a not so significant need for them to spend when the economy is doing very well. Now, evaluating fiscal policy is probably gonna be the hardest thing that you do uh, at GCSC, and it's a skill that's going to help you later on in AS and A2. But for now, let's stick to what you need to know for uh, GCSE level. 
Now, evaluating fiscal policy, we're going to take a look at three things. The first one is the multiplier effect. And the multiplier effect is kind of a simple thing to understand. And what it means is that one person's spending becomes another person's spending becomes another person's spending. So when the government spends on a new project, let's say building a school, the people who built that school go and spend the money somewhere, and then those businesses that have had business from those people continue to spend this money, and it circulates throughout the economy. Measuring the direct effect of the multiplier is a little bit difficult. So when we evaluate fiscal policy, we would deem it necessary to know what the size of the multiplier is, and that is hard to determine. So that's the first factor we're going to evaluate on. The second factor we're going to evaluate on is time lag. And time lag is actually quite a few things. You have to imagine that a policy doesn't take effect immediately, nor is it developed immediately. So whenever a fiscal policy is used to address an issue, we have to consider the fact that first it has to be determined. How much are we going to change spending? How much are we going to change tax? What are we going to tax? What are we going to spend on? And these things are not easy nor quick to determine. So when you evaluate fiscal policy, it's very helpful to take a look at time lag in that regard. The third thing is to consider the conflict between policy objectives. If you're trying to increase real GDP, well, that is going to also tend to increase the price level and also an increase unemployment. There's a trade-off there, right? So real GDP goes up, inflation goes up, unemployment goes down. It also works the other way. If real GDP goes down, price level goes down, but unemployment goes up. So tackling inflation will require you to potentially increase unemployment. So there are these conflicts that government needs to be aware of. Now, these are three key factors to think about when you're evaluating, but they're not the only ones. But if you know these three, you're in good shape.